Growing up, um, Whitney and I were kind of like best friends. He was just really loving and supportive. He was really happy all the time. Hey, Whitney. Hey, Whitney. <laughs> he just loved exploring and adventuring and seeing new things. Everyone that came into our lives just loved him instantly. He was just so full of life and energy. First, you know, he lost his ability to travel. And then he was unable to work anymore. Stopped being able to take any photos because he couldn't set up the equipment. Then he wasn't able to get out of bed anymore. Gradually, one by one, everything got taken away. When he moved in, we knew he had something chronic. He'd say he just felt dizzy. He'd have to stay in bed. It just went downhill. He just got more and more tired, and he was going to all these different doctors, and, and we just didn't understand what it was. He got to the point where he said, I can cook my food or I can wash the dishes, but I can't do both. I think chronic fatigue is probably the last major disease we don't know anything about. It's unlikely my son's going to get better unless I figure something out. And so I feel a lot of weight that I, I have to figure it out. And, I'm, and it's really hard to figure that out. Okay. These are the five controls. Uh -huh. And this one is a real outlier. What we have to do is look at the severe patients. The severe patients will have the largest signal as to what's wrong but they're not going to come to the clinic. We have to go to them. That funding has to come from the, from the private sector, which is difficult, or it has to come from NIH, which is probably more difficult. <laughs> I think that's something that we, we have as American citizens to have an obligation to all our citizens. And the ones that are suffering, uh, they need some hope.